How is it everyone? Today I'm here with my New Japan Pro Wrestling Fighting Spirit Unleashed review. Without wasting any time, let's go ahead and jump right in the video with our overall thoughts on Fighting Spirit Unleashed. Uh, going to the show had absolutely no interest just because they didn't even announce the card until like, what, a few days ago? So we didn't even have a complete card until the week of the show, which is, you know, not usually the best idea, especially for New Japan. Especially for a sold, uh, show that's not sold out. But coming out of uh, Fighting Spirit Unleashed, I will say I thought it was a great show. I, I had a lot of fun with it. I thought, you know, every match, at well, least almost every match, was on that good to very good level. We had two great matches in the show, I thought. And like I said, I just thought it was very fun. It was three and a half hours, not, you know, your typical four to five hour, you know, New Japan show. So I was, you know, I was uh, surprised, or I was pleasantly surprised with the fact that it was three and a half hours only. And um, yeah, like I said, I just thought it was a lot of fun. You had a lot of fun tied to matches, and uh, yeah, it showed up to get a thumbs up from me. Like I said, I thought it was, a, you know, a great show from here for New Japan. And um, yeah, like I said, it didn't really disappoint me at all. So the first match we had on the show was a six man tag team match. Of course, you have Juice and Thunder Liger. Uh, Taguchi and ACH taking on the team of Rocky Romero and Rapongi 3K. This was a very fun opener right here, I thought. You know, Liger and Yo were going at it, and they pretty much, you know, isolated uh, Yo from, you know, his team for a good majority point. You know, at one point, uh, Taguchi did his whole, you know, coaching the, you know, coaching them through to the ass attack. And, you know, there's a funny part in the match where it was Taguchi and uh, Rocky Romero, and Taguchi immediately went for the ass attack, and Romero just moved out of the way and completely missed. I thought that was a player spot right there. But this is a good solid magic set. ACH looked really good. He had a hot tag and just ran rush out over, you know, Rapongi 3K. And, uh, you know, he definitely stood out of everyone in this match. Ending came with Taguchi and Rocky Romero. And Taguchi ended up putting the Dundon onto Rocky Romero for the 1-2-3 victory. So Taguchi's team with the victory in the opening match, like I said, I thought it was very fun. I definitely enjoyed it. That was definitely a good match. And then from there, I'm going to go to Hangman Page and Chase Owens taking on SoCal and Censored. SCU! Um, this was another good match right here, you know, it was a very basic tag team match, but I thought it definitely worked out. Uh, Hangman Page's interaction with SCU was great. I thought, you know, him and Kaz kind of reigniting their old rival uh, rivalry back in the day was pretty good. Uh, he just, you know, comes out like such a star, and I just absolutely love Hangman Page. With Chase Owens, he didn't look bad, he got his stuff in, you know, he didn't really look too great, but he didn't look that impressive at the same time. So, you know, nothing really too bad from Chase Owens, but, you know... Uh, Adam Page definitely was uh, the star of this match. You know, hitting his signature shooting star on the outside to uh, uh, to Kaz, but Kaz put his knees up, so I ended up eating the shooting star, uh, which I thought was great, and which would lead up to uh, would lead up to uh, SCU getting the victory after hitting the uh, best moon salt onto or he t did he hit it or did he attempt it? I think he hit it, and then he went for the BME, the best Meltzer uh, Mel Meltzer ever uh, on Chase Owens. So SCU gets the win. Uh, like I said, you know, typical match, but it was good. Hangman Page was the best. You know, his, he hit his uh, signature slingshot lariat uh, towards the end of the match before it didn't take it out by Kaz on the outside. But, um, yeah, definitely, you know, it was definitely a fun match. And speaking of fun matches, this is, you know, at this point will, will be the match tonight. Another six-man tag team match. You have Jeff Cobb team with the best friends. Or, yeah, no, sorry, sorry. Jeff Cobb team with Chris Saban and um, Flip Gordon to take on Hiroki Goto and the best friends. Sorry. Chaos. And uh, this was very fun. I definitely thought uh, Jeff Cobb and best friends definitely shined uh, very well in this match. Just the comedic stuff between the best friends and just Jeff Cobb looked like a complete beast. I definitely thought they mixed in well. Um, but, you know, uh, Chris Saban and Flip Gordon did their jobs well. You know, Flip Gordon got a high tag at one point and looked really good, you know, hitting a... Uh, uh, a springboard sling blade onto, I believe, uh, Beretta uh, came off absolutely beautifully. So Flip Gordon definitely looked good. Um, you know, Chris Saban kind of was just there. I feel like the majority of the match he was just getting his ass kicked, and he was, you know, kind of the guy that best friends of Jeff Cobb were just um, picking on for the most part. I, I keep saying best friends of Jeff Cobb. I apologize that um, uh, Hiroki Goto and best friends were pretty much uh, teaming up on Saban. And then, of course, he had the interaction between Goto and Jeff Cobb, who just were just absolutely great. You know, Jeff Cobb hit the standing shooting star on him, and, you know, some huge hilarious between both of them. Just, you know, I was there for their match at the G1 Special in San Francisco, and I thought it was a good match, but, you know, they're definitely building toward a rematch, obviously, considering Jeff Cobb's not the ROH World TV, uh, TV champion. But, I don't know, I just, I thought their interaction in this match came off better than their actual match they had in San Francisco was. So, uh, that was a big spot with Goto and, um, and Cobb. Uh, Cobb cut off the best friends for like, the hug, and then eventually they hugged in the ring. And they did a, a great spot with Jeff Cobb where Chuck T tried to suplex Jeff Cobb, couldn't do it. Trent came in and assisted him. They actually did a stalling suplex, not just a regular suplex, but a stalling suplex on Jeff Cobb, which was very impressive, I thought. So, best friends, like I said, them and Jeff Cobb definitely were the, the standouts of this match. And love the finish as well with Jeff Cobb just hitting a German suplex, followed by a um, toward the islands and Chuck Taylor for the 1 2 3 win. So, Cobb and his team win. Like I said, I thought it was a 
a, a really fun six-man tag. And then from there, I'm going to another six-man tag. Of course, we're going to have uh, Zuki Gun taking on LIJ, which I thought was, you know, it was fine for what it was, you know, right from the get-go. Of course, Zuki Gun take, uh, took out LIJ. Majority of the match just worked on Sonata, isolated him. You know, Zack Sabre Jr. is working on his limbs. Not until we got a hot tag, ran the rough shot for a little bit until uh, Evil tagged in, and then Sonata tagged back in. And uh, Naito got another little hot tag for a little bit. But um, for the most part, Zuki Gun just, you know, isolated them. Archer and, um, and David Boy Jr. were just very, very aggressive in this match as well. And uh, absolutely the finish, too. Kind of Evil and Sabre Jr. And they were just going at it. And then, of course, you know, um, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. was able to counter the uh, uh, This Is Evil or whatever his finish is called. I, I totally bl uh, go on blank right there for Evil's finish. But uh, Zack Sabre Jr. countered it into, like... Uh, cradle pin and as he's pinning him he's flipping the crowd over which I thought was absolutely awesome so Zack Sabre Jr. pins Evil in the middle of the ring right there and of course that builds off of the fact that Zack Sabre Jr. keeps beating Evil and um, I just thought it was a good solid match right there so you know not too much from it but nothing really bad and then of course to go to which is in my opinion the worst match on the entire night uh, Hiroshi, Hiroshi Tanahashi and Kushida taking on Jay White and Gato nothing match really it was just you know uh, Jay White and Gato working on Tanahashi Kushida got a tag and uh, you know, try locking the hoverboard uh, arm lock onto uh, onto uh, Gato before Jay White helped them, and then of course you know the finish came with you know Jay White and Tanahashi referees distracted, uh, Gato hit um, Tanahashi with some brass knucks and followed by the Blade Runner from uh, my pervert Jay White for the one two three. So Jay White pins Tanahashi in the middle of the ring, so him and Gato win. Then of course afterwards gets in the mic, cuts a promo, pretty much saying that you know what is Tanahashi waiting for? Holds a briefcase up, so. We're probably going to get Jay White and Tanahashi at Kingdom for Wrestling next week, which I'm not too excited for because I really wasn't a fan of the Wrestle Kingdom match. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I've never been a huge fan of Jay White, so I don't, I'm don't. i not all for his push. But, you know, he's improving. You know, every time I see him, I do enjoy him a little bit more, but not to the point where I, I think he's a main event guy. So, yeah, definitely the worst thing in the show, like I said. Really much wasn't to it. Uh, really wasn't much to it. And then, of course, we had the, the 15 minute intermission after that. And then, of course, once we came back, we had the IWGP Junior Heavyweight. Uh, championship uh, tournament semifinals between uh, Will Ospreay and Marty Skrull. People say it's a match tonight, I wouldn't argue it, but this is definitely my second favorite match tonight. Right from the get-go, Will Ospreay hits a standing Spanish fly, uh, followed by a Sasuke special on the outside, followed by a, was a, shoot, a 450 or shooting star, I don't remember which one, uh, onto Marty Skrull almost immediately, um, you know, for, for a hot finish right there, so that was crazy. These two just, you know, if you've seen any of their matches in the past, you know, these two just have great chemistry and definitely showcased here. I thought their spots were on point. I thought just the timing of everything came off really great. And, um, you know, these two just put on another fantastic match. You know, Mario Skrull, of course, had his regular comeback. Super kick on the apron on the outside. Worked on Osprey for a good while up to the point where he actually, um, you know, locked Osprey into the crossface chicken wing. Osprey fought out of it. Uh, Marty Skrull worked on his neck, which was actually a spot where Marty Skrull just absolutely stood on his neck and just pulled the ropes down to add more pressure, which I thought was like, Jesus Christ, his neck was already fucked up as it is, and you're just making it even worse, and I just thought that was absolutely crazy. Uh, Marty Skrull actually hit her Karana off the uh, top rope when uh, Osprey went for a superplex off the top rope, but Marty Skrull fought out of it into a uh, her Karana, which I thought was a great spot right there. And then the finish came, was absolutely insane. Uh, Marty Skrull hits a uh, double-hooked... Um, uh, Tiger suplex off the top rope, nearly killing Will Ospreay. Ospreay kicks out of two. Uh, Marty Skrull is able to hit a lariat, followed by the graduation for the 1 2 3 victory. So Marty Skrull defeats Will Ospreay. Fantastic match. Like I said, my second favorite match of the night. Uh, people argue that it'll be a match of the night, and that's fine. I'm not going to argue against it. But uh, me personally, thought it was my second favorite match on the show. Definitely was a tremendous match. These two always have fantastic matches. You know, the best part is you can definitely tell Osprey has moved up to the heavyweight division, which is good. You can tell he's getting a little bit bigger, and his matches, his, he's changing his style a little bit. And for Marty Skrull, you know, we didn't get any comedy bullshit from him that we usually get, uh, which ruins a lot of his matches, to be perfectly honest. We just got a dead serious, you know, dead focused Marty Skrull. So um, I thought it all played out perfectly. So. Yeah, Skrull and Osprey, fantastic match. Always enjoy those two going at it. And then, of course, after that, we had the IWGP Tag Team Championship match between the Young Bucks and the Gorillas of Destiny. I thought this was a really good match, but I just, I don't know, I wasn't feeling it. I feel like G.O.D. really wasn't kind of there. Uh, the Young Bucks were fantastic. I thought Matt selling, Nick, you know, fighting for his life in the ring while Matt was selling the outside was just absolutely superb. Their psychology was unbelievable in this match, I felt. But I just feel like the Gorillas of Destiny didn't really hold their end of the bargain up. 
I just feel like a lot of what they were doing was boring and just, I really wasn't, it wasn't into it, you know. So early on, it was back and forth stuff. The Young Bucks were getting the upper hand. They went for, I believe, a double suplex or something on one of them, and Matt's back gave out. So, of course, that was, you know, the highlight of the match afterwards was Matt's back. Uh, Matt actually went through a table that was set up by Tonga Loa at one point when he went for the uh, went to the top rope. And then Tom Lago just pushed him and he fell through the table. So after that, Matt was pretty much out of it. Nick was pretty much fending for his life. He was taking everything that G uh, G.O.D. were throwing at him, uh, kicking out of it, fighting back. So he was very resilient and I thought he, you know, he played perfectly. Matt ended up eventually getting back into the match. Uh, you know, put one of them in the sharpshooter. Uh, you know, had a nice fiery comeback for a little bit and hit a desperation spear. Um, once his back was giving out, his spear to, you know, save some time. And then, you know, finish came with them going for more bang for your buck. Uh, Matt couldn't lift up. I, I, don't, I don't remember who he had on his shoulders, but Nick had a system. Uh, hit the senton. Nick hit the, uh, the the 450. And then, you know, Matt couldn't hit the moonsault. Took his time. Hit it. Uh, Tom and Tonga, I believe, broke up the pin up. And then, of course, they went to set up the uh, melter driver. But when Nick went for the jump, uh, Tama just caught him for a gun stun. Ended up hitting a gun stun on Nick for... Uh, near fall right there and then of course uh ending came with tongue lower end up uh hitting a uh, uh pop-up gun stun onto uh, matt for the one two three so god are your new IWG, uh, iwgp tag team champions like i said i thought it was a very good match i understand the story they're going with but i just feel like like i said the young bucks thought were fantastic but for some reason i just feel like god weren't really holding their end of the bargain in they weren't being you know as aggressive as i want to see them be i don't know i just feel like they they were lacking uh, what could have been a great match. So I, I kind of fault them. But like I said, the Young Bucks were fantastic. And I still thought it was a very good match. So, um, yeah. So definitely interested to see the direction to go. Maybe we get a Golden Lovers versus G.O.D. match in the future. Who knows? But, um, yeah. Like I said, I thought it was very good for it was. And, of course, we go to the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship match. Juice Robinson defending against Cody. Uh, this was a good match. You know, Cody, I feel like he's kind of back to his old ways where he's kind of just joking around and not really taking the match all that seriously because, you know, he kind of really wasn't. But, you know, there's some basic wrestling. You know, at one point, you know, Brandy faked an injury uh, to help Cody, you know, on the offense against Juice. And I just felt like the rest of the really basic match and, you know, the crowd was kind of 50-50. Uh, they were doing a punch exchange at one point where instead of going yes, you know, the yes booth in there doing Juice Cody, Juice Cody, which I thought was great. I thought that was definitely um, really good the crowd to act on that. And, um... Uh, you know, Cody, they teased the count out, you know, Juice Robinson hit Pulp Fiction on Cody, but Cody rolled out, um, and then Cody hit a, a crossroads on Juice, and then, of course, they teased the count out, like I said, before both men ran back in the ring, and then, you know, they're just going back and forth, and, you know, Juice went for a superplex, uh, hit a superplex, I should say, but we went for the cradle pin, Cody cradled him, one, two, three, and Cody is your brand new IWGP US Heavyweight Champion. Not a fan of the decision. I don't even know why they put the title on Cody. You know, Juice literally just won it. Uh, he won it in a great match. He won it in a great fashion. The crowd's behind him. The fans are behind him. And he has this momentum as champion. And you just make him a transitional champion. I don't know. I just I didn't, I don't see the logic in Cody having the U.S. Heavyweight title, to be perfectly honest. I just don't see what sense that makes having Cody have that championship. But, uh, like I said, him and Juice, I felt like they had a, a good match. You know, it wasn't anything that stands out or, to me, but... They definitely went out there and had a entertaining match for the most part. Like I said, I thought they're, they did the jobs well. But I just wish Cody was more serious and didn't joke around like he did. But what can you do? He's new US Heavyweight Champion. Whatever. Not a fan of the decision, but, you know, what can you do? Hopefully it, it paints a bigger picture for Juice Robinson because I do see the, the, the world in Juice Robinson. So maybe he's one to beat Jericho for that, the Intercontinental title? Who knows? We'll see who the future leads, but um, yeah, just just a good match. Then of course, go to our main event, which, like I said, in my personal opinion, I believe was the best match on the show. Match of the night, of course. The gold, <clears throat> excuse me, Golden Lovers taking on Okada and Ishii from Chaos. Uh, this was a fantastic main event right here. Both teams really going out there and just uh, just stealing the show with just the ridiculous uh, sequences and counters and just you know. You, you know how amazing all four wrestlers are, and they really just captured that in this match. And, you know, right from the get-go, it was Okada and Ibushi, and then, of course, went to Ishii and uh, Omega. Uh, they teased the, the face-off with Omega and Okada. They were legal in the ring for a little bit, where, you know, Omega hit a V-trigger and teased the one-winged angel to Okada get out of it. Okada went for the Rainmaker, but, of course, you know, Ibushi actually cut him off from hitting Omega with the uh, Rainmaker, which I thought was a great spot right there. Ibushi and Ishii just beat the holy fuck out of each other with just chops and just... 
absolutely laying their kicks in and hits and uh, just had some in insane sequences and you know so did Omega and Ishii you know Omega got really fired up and just started laying his shit on Ishii which I thought made for some great stuff Okada and Ibushi were, were fantastic as well you know they did of course the uh, cross slash I believe it's called the spot where you know uh, Bushi and Omega do uh, in tandem's uh, moon salts to the outside. Uh, that was just that was a great spot right there. Just a lot of craziness, a lot of great stuff. Like I said, the the sequences were just absolutely insane. I thought, especially towards the end of the match where Golden Lovers were lined up for the win, going for the Golden Trigger, but you know Okada interfered. Uh, Okada goes for a drop kick, which by the way, early part of the match, Okada drop kicked Bushi. He kicked Bushi in the fucking next year. He kicked the fuck out of him. But um, great spot where Okada went for the uh, for the drop kick, but Kenny Omega caught him into an awesome Liger bomb. It looked absolutely awesome. Uh, took out Okada, and then of course Golden Lovers went for the Golden Trigger on Ishii for the one, two, three win. Beat Okada and Ishii. Not a very long match either. It was about a t just 20, 20, or 20 or 23 minutes around there in that in that uh, time range right there. But I thought it was a fantastic main event. Like, like I said, I thought you know all four men looked tremendously. Kota Ibushi is just, he's fantastic. The dude's on a, a completely different level, and I can watch him forever. Same with Kenny and, you know, Okada, even though he, his whole storyline right now, I thought he looked great for the most part. And Ishii just looked like he was out there to kill. So, uh, just a fantastic main event. Really enjoyed it. And, of course, afterwards, you know, uh, Omega tries to give his goodnight speech, like he always does on all the shows, and pretty much says, you know, he's gonna, you know we're not breaking the 10-year promise, but, you know, he wants to rematch with Ibushi next week at, at King of Pro Wrestling. Cody cuts him off and says, no, 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 let's not, you know, I'm not saying let's not do that, but let's do Omega versus Ibushi versus Cody. So, next week at King of Pro Wrestling, it's going to be a triple threat. Kenny, Ibushi, and Cody for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Not really too sure how I feel about that, just because I really want to see the rematch between Cody, or not Cody, versus Omega and Ibushi, and I feel like Cody is really just inserting his, himself in the match for no reason. Uh, even though I know he has beef with, you know, him and... Uh, you know, him and Omega are fine, but him and Abushi, you know, going back to Wrestle Kingdom, that fantastic match they had. Um, I could see them being, you know, a title match at a future show, but I don't know. I just, I like that it's different because we don't ever get triple threats for the IWGP Heavyweight title. So I like that it's different, but at the same time, it's just like, I really want the rematch. And I know we're not going to get out Wrestle Kingdom, so I don't know. Uh, maybe they do an angle where Abushi beats Tanahashi for the briefcase. I don't know, but... Yeah, triple threat for the championship next week. Uh, should be great, but you know, I really just really wish it was a one-on-one -on -one match instead. But yeah, they do that set set the match, and of course they do the whole shebang with Omega saying you know good night and whatnot. But um, yeah, like I said, I thought Fighting Spirit Unleashed was definitely a great show for New Japan. Like I said, I thought every match besides one match was pretty much on like good to very good level, and you had two fantastic matches as well. So definitely no complaints from me from uh, New Japan for their Fighting Spirit Unleashed. Uh, next week or next Monday, I, should, I guess I can say is of course the King of Pro Wrestling. Uh, the only matches that we know are Skrull and Kushida. Looks like it's going to be, it's the triple threat as well. And then it looks like it's going to be Tanahashi and Jay White. So hopefully, you know, they announce the full card. It's a better card, you know, with some more solid matchups. But I don't know. I'm not really too excited. I feel like they should have been hyping this show more often. But I'll definitely check it out. I'm excited for it. It should be a good show overall. Just like tonight's show. Like I said, I had a lot of fun with it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, if you guys did please like below. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thank you guys for watching the video.